Welcome back, guys. It's Mike Drop Sports, and I'm your host, Jason Jacobs. In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, state of the AFC North, um, especially after Lamar Jackson is uh, non-exclusive franchise tag today by the deadline which will give that Baltimore Ravens team two first round picks which I think is the super smart way to go for them because they've already lost out on that chance to trade Lamar and that's what they should have done if because they knew that they weren't going to keep Lamar Jackson let's face that guys so the the organization knew that and they know how hard it is right now to work with Lamar and his mother. Um, they don't return phone calls. They 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 don't have uh, conversation. Supposedly, these are the rumors. And I'm seeing that maybe to be true because they've not been able to get a deal done. And the Ravens were willing to pay him a good bit of money. I don't think it was fully guaranteed. I think it was like $150 million guaranteed. But that changes your family's history forever and their financial status forever. And I mean, that's good money, man. And just because the silly Deshaun Watson contract was given out doesn't mean that other NFL teams are going to follow suit. Because why would they follow suit with such a crazy off-the-wall contract? I'm not sure I wouldn't as a GM or an organization, an owner. But I get comments in my shorts whenever I post these videos and somebody made a comment about, well, teams can restructure. Teams can move money around to create cap space, to be able to put um, quality players around these quarterbacks such as Lamar Jackson that have to have an immense amount of talent around them. And yes, that is true, guys, but you can only move so much money and you only have so many contracts that you're able to do that with. And I get that, that teams can move money around and make things easier, um, you know, to sign other players, which you can't do, you can't do it all. And you have to get a lot of pieces around Lamar. So... We'll get back to that and what you need to have around Lamar in order to um, to win. But, guys, I just want to welcome you. We're starting to build like a set downstairs in the basement. Um, this is just like a leather li little temporary thing. But hope you all are starting to enjoy the quality of the videos. They're going to start getting better and better um, as we get more subscribers. And I get farther down the road in this um, YouTube adventure and I appreciate the 55 plus subscribers so far. I know that may not seem like a lot to a lot of other creators, but um, it means a lot to me. And I appreciate you guys doing it. And I appreciate you guys sharing the, the channel to others. And just go ahead and, and try to promote um, the likes on the videos and also try to get some more subscribers for the channel. It just builds our community of people that like to talk about sports. And I just want to let everybody know real quick also, please no hostile um, comments and don't attack people crazily um, on this channel. Um, have respectful conversations. You can talk shit, man. I want you to talk shit, but don't like personally attack somebody for their views. Just make sure we keep it to where it's only about the sports and we can walk away from it still cool still be able to talk to each other and not be like, not have hostility. But back to the sports. I appreciate you guys um, for being here for this AFC North talk because Lamar Jackson's situation is going to change the AFC North. So we have the, the, the AFC North now that I felt was getting pretty loaded up to be the t one of the toughest. And with Lamar Jackson, it does make it tougher because he's a running style quarterback. So you have to prepare your team to, for a grind, for a four-quarter grind because you're going to have to play that running team that tries to wear your defense down, keep you on the field, and beat you up. That's what Lamar wants to play. That's the black and blue football. And he does have the ability to create the big play. I don't like the big plays with his arm because I feel like he's a one-dimensional guy. Yeah, he had 66% a couple times, whatever. Okay, I can pad stats too, probably. You know, I'm just saying. There's ways to, to, that the statistics don't always give you the big picture. The big picture here is winners. Winners, winners, winners. Who wins games? And let's go through the AFC North right now and talk about that. We have first... 
Well, let's start out with the best team in the AFC North, which is the Cincinnati Bengals. And why are they the best team? Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Those two guys really know how to bring it, man. They're good. They're special. And man, did Cincinnati luck out when they hit the lottery with those two. But Cincinnati, you're going to be in the same situation as every other NFL team. You're going to have to pay these guys. And how do you keep the turnover in your organization to allow you to keep restocking the shelves to keep your team competitive and good because one or two players unless they're super special and Joe Burrow might be that special Jamar Chase might be that special to carry those teams some players are that special you got the goat Tom Brady he knew how to play with scrubs and win he's the goat man we've seen it he played with some scrubs he had some good players at times and he had some scrubs at times and he won with me Either or, any way you slice it, the man is going to win the games. And he knows how to win big games. And I say that all the time on this channel. Big games. I don't care about the statistics. They're great. I like to hear good ones and I like to see all the good ones. And sometimes that does give you a little bit of a view inside of a player. But I want to see what they're made of whenever it matters. I want to see them win the big ones. I want to see him be able to carry your team in the fourth quarter with three minutes left, two minutes left. We need one. We need a field goal. We need a touchdown. I want to see that guy take us down the field and get that W in the big moments, especially in a divisional game, especially in a playoff game. I mean, I need, I need to see that. And if I don't see that after three, four, five seasons, I'm going to say as a general manager, that guy don't got it, dude. We haven't won. Let's restart. Quit wasting time. Stay competitive. Move on. And that's the name of the game today. In today's NFL world. Speed. Move on. Get rid of people that aren't giving you anything. Quit paying them. And try to move on. Always be looking to upgrade. And I think that that's a big thing that GMs need to start thinking of. They just need to keep in their mind... I need to always be thinking, where can I upgrade this team? And if they keep that, just that sole thing on, that sole thought, and just stay focused on that and always be looking for an upgrade no matter what you have at that position, unless, i.e., Tom Brady, you have an elite talent there, you've already secured with a contract, okay, don't focus on that. But you need to keep your eyes on the prize. Always be looking to upgrade. If there's a deal that makes sense, make it. Don't be so sentimental. The fans aren't. They may be mad for about 20, 30 minutes that you got rid of your, their favorite player. But all they care about is winning. That's it. What fixes everything? Winning. So let's get back to Cincinnati with Joe Burrow. This guy is an elite guy, and he's going to be in this division for a long time because I don't think the Bengals are that dumb to get rid of him. They would, they're going to drown with Joe. They're going to take it to the end until they're the Bungles again with Joe. That's how far they're going to ride that train. And Joe Burrow is going to stay there. He does a lot for that franchise by being the player that he is. And it really has got these guys to a different level. It's actually made them competitive. It's actually made people want to watch them. And good for them. And I think they're going to stay the best team going into 2023 in the AFC North. Why? Because I think that Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are that elite. Now, the front office in Cincinnati, we'll see if they can keep up with that elite talent on the field that they have in a couple players and let's see if they can stand true and keep building around them and going out there and finding great deals to keep building around them and hopefully so because we don't want to see the careers of two great players wasted by a bad organization we don't want to see that because that sucks man that limits the guy's earning potential that just kills a guy's career and what could have been because some fran franchises are killers, man. You go there, you know you're screwed, dude. You're screwed. And you know it. And I'm sure if we as fans know it, the players surely know it. 
that it's going to be a fluke if they come out of that thing good and able to get another contract somewhere else and get the hell up out of that bad situation. And the Bengals were that for a long time. Nobody wanted to play for the Bengals, man. Come on. They got beat up every game. You know, bad records, good players, get great draft picks and years and years of just quality draft picks and only having a winner here and there and getting into playoffs here and there. But now they've they've got to the Super Bowl and in my opinion, could have won one, should have won one. But Aaron Donald's just a beast. But anyway, back to the AFC North. And now let's move on to the second best team in the division. And guys, I want you to remember, this is a Lamar Jackson moving on type scenario. So that's what we're saying, that the Ravens don't have him anymore. So we're moving on to what will be the second best team in the division. And that is my team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And why do I think they're the second best uh, team, in, team in this division currently? Going into 2023, as it sits today before the free agency explosion, the trades and the signings and the draft picks and all that. As it sits today, the Pittsburgh Steelers are the number two team in that division. Why? Seven and two down the stretch. A young Kenny Pickett starting to really gel with his talented group of wideouts and tight ends. A young running back in Najee Harris who found another gear. And an X-Factor in Jalen Warren, who's coming out of the backfield, consistently getting positive yards, consistently moving the chains. And that's what you need from a guy, a third down back, a guy that spells your first guy, Naj. So the, the Steelers are, they've gotten few things covered. Now we see too the defense and we see a healthy Pittsburgh defense with what they had last year in 2022 in week one, really can put the clamps on you. And no one can really argue that. Right now, the way they're designed, if they can go ahead and get a couple things in the defensive backfield to shore that up and somebody to spell TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, then I think that defense goes from being pretty damn good to elite, to like one, two in the NFL type shit. And... When you allow somebody like Minka Fitzpatrick, if you can get a couple corners that can keep lock on people and keep a, a, a tab on the other team's top receivers, you're getting a ball hawk like Minka Fitzpatrick who can play center field and create those turnovers. And why would he be able to create a mass quantity of turnovers whenever that happens? Is because TJ Watt is going to have a couple extra seconds, maybe. And all it takes is a half of an extra second in the NFL with good corners. Gives TJ, Highsmith, and whoever else they find to go into the mix. That gives them an extra half second to get pressure on that quarterback, which creates bad throws. And I'm just telling you guys... It's going to be an elite thing, but they need just a couple more puzzle pieces, and we'll see. And I'm telling you, they need to go to Utah and get that Phillips guy, that corner. He has a knack for finding the football. I did a short on him. I like him so much, and he reminds me of Mike Hilton. And what has this defense in Pittsburgh been missing since Mike Hilton went to the Bengals? It's that pressure from the slot corner guy, that nickel back guy, that guy you bring in when you want to create like something special, something different, something exotic. You're bringing him in. He can blitz the passer with, you know, speed, agility, and this Phillips kid has that. And create turnovers. And this Phillips kid is probably even a better ball hawk than um, Hilton is or was. And Hilton's a pretty damn good player. That really hurt the Steelers. When the Steelers lost Mike Hilton, people may not have thought that that, that was a big loss and that the Steelers could um, overcome that. But guys, he was a big player in that defense, man. And I think, too, we need to start using Terrell Edmonds more down in the box. And I felt like the defense did bring him down in there sometimes. I feel like he's a big enough body that he can go ahead and create you know, some turnovers and create some mismatches 
and be able to be physical down there and blitz. And I think there's some exotic things they could do, especially if they could keep uh, Dermonte Casey also, guys. You keep Casey and um, Minka and Edmonds and maybe pick up a young kid in a draft that's hungry, add a Phillips from Utah, something like that. And boy, that's going to be electric, man. Come on. And you can't tell me that they won't be knocking on the door of the Bengals and saying, hey, we're the Pittsburgh Steelers and we're coming to kick your ass, dude. Because they will. That's how it usually goes. And, and they're close now. The Steelers have had good close games. They've beat the Bengals while the Bengals have been good. So if I were the Steelers, I'm ready to play them, man. I don't, I don't know. I can beat them. I could beat anybody, I would say, if I'm the Steelers riding that high of a 7-2 record. A young Kenny Pickett that's already in this offseason, working with the receivers, and really trying to gel with these guys and lead this ball club. You even have Mitch Trubisky working out with them because he's a leader too. He really is a leader. He, he really does lead by example. He doesn't throw a fit, you know. He, does, he may have said a couple little things, but, I mean, he's human. But but all in all, I think he's a leader in the ball in the in the clubhouse. You know, come on. But anyway, guys, that's my number two team in the AFC currently as we sit right now in 2023. We. Uh, have the Bengals in the number one spot. We have the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers in the number two spot in the AFC North. Now, I'm going to go to the number three team in the AFC, and that's your Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns went out and made a foolish contract with the Deshaun Watson. They set the market way too high. They, it's just unrealistic. I, I think so. I think that there uh, needs to be a little pull back from that but you got to be able to pay other guys and the Cleveland Browns are going to find out how hard that is real soon when that Deshaun Watson money starts coming off the books and you got to find help and you ain't got no money move and restructure all you like you're paying a guy a boatload of cash every year 50 some million dollars every year <laughs> Does that make sense, man? I don't know. I, I just don't think so. I just don't know where you find enough serviceable players on the cheap unless you are a super drafting organization that drafts top shelf. You hit on every pick or damn near every pick, I would say. You don't have to hit on everyone, but you need to hit on 75% of your picks to maintain the amount of talent that you need around these guys. Deshaun Watson can throw way better than Lamar Jackson. He's proven that time and time again. But Deshaun Watson is the type of guy that you bring him into Pittsburgh or Baltimore or Cincinnati and you apply some heat to him, make him get a little uncomfortable, and you, you got him beat, bro. I mean, it, that's what it boils down to. You got him beat. It's easy. We've seen the formula to beat Deshaun. We've seen that formula. We've seen the formula to beat Lamar Jackson. So, I mean, it, you, the blueprint's out there. <laughs> Take it. Yeah, are they going to win some? Sure, because they're going to have some explosive plays here and there. That's going to get them some wins and keep them going. And they're going to run into shitty teams. And they're going to blow them up because they can't stop the run. They don't apply any pressure. Sure, that's where you're going to get your 66% passer uh, completion rating, you know. That's where you're going to get your uh, top shelf 100.5, you know, passer rating, all that shit in the game, QBR, whatever. Yeah, that's where you're going to get all that stuff. That's where you're going to pad the stats to make all you people that um, are so statistical and all this. That's You're going to say, oh, he's the best. You got to pay him. Can't let him walk. Look at the whole picture, guys. Look at the whole thing before we go and say, pay the man. Look at the big picture. Take his wins. Take the quality wins. And if you're into statistics, go ahead and put a numerical value on each quality win and set yourself up a scale. Set yourself up a scale and say, hey, let me give points on all these, you know, all that. Excuse me, guys. My light came off. Let me plug it back in. 
I like to have it because it helps me um, read my notes too whenever I'm talking to the camera here. So thank you guys. I apologize. Like I said, we're new into the studio thing here. So, all right, there we go. We're back on track. I kicked it with my foot. But anyway, guys, that's my top three teams. The Browns are in for a world of shit paying that guy that much money. They're about to be back to the bottom of the barrel. And let's face it, they're not a very good um, drafting ball club. Never have been, never. <laughs> Come on, they took Baker fucking Mayfield in the first pick. Come on, bro. Get out of here. Baker Mayfield, number one overall. Come on, man. <laughs> That just tells you what kind of organization they got. That, that's it. Period. Do you see the good organizations making picks like that? No, because they don't pick at the top of the freaking draft. Because they don't suck like that. They're picking down at 20 to 32, you know? <laughs> so that brings us on just... It's pitiful. That brings us on to the Baltimore Ravens. What I think you guys have been wanting to hear. The Baltimore Ravens. Um, yeah, they're going to lose Lamar. He's going to be non-exclusively franchise tagged. Um, I hear some grumbling, some rumors of a couple teams that are super interested and really willing to uh, throw the big bag at Lamar and give up them draft picks without blinking an eye. In which, honestly, in today's world, it's probably getting him for cheap because they probably would pay more if they had traded for him. Which, that's where the Ravens really fouled up, guys. The Ravens, all you Ravens fans, the Ravens really screwed themselves whenever they didn't, when they knew that they weren't going to keep him. They should have just traded him off. It would have been better for both sides. I mean, Lamar's being represented by his mother. Come on, guys. Come on. Anyone that wants to argue that that's a good thing, that he's doing the right thing, you're ridiculous too. Because let's face it, your mother cannot represent you. First of all, she may be the smartest woman in the world. I have no idea. I'm just saying. She has emotion. You're her baby. <laughs> Do you think that's a good thing to bring that kind of emotion into $300 million contracts? No, not at all. It's not good. It's not good business. It's stupid. That's why I call Lamar a clown. Not because of his play. I think he's a quality athlete. I don't think he can win the big game. I think he's a great regular season quarterback. And if that's what you want to be, the champion of the regular season, enjoy. You know? Enjoy that as a fan. Say, yeah, we get so excited. We, we won the regular season. We're ready to roll. We get into the playoffs and you're going to get your freaking teeth stomped in. Because why? <laughs> you got Lamar, dude. The formula, the blueprints out there to beat him. <laughs> the, the blueprints out there to beat him. And when you make him one-dimensional, which he already pretty much is, got it. So, where do the Ravens look to get back in the quarterback uh, fold here? Um, are they able to draft one this year in a quarterback-rich draft? Do they make a draft day, day trade like a blockbuster once they get these two first-round picks? Because then you figure, if they let Lamar walk and they have two first-round picks from that, they have their first-round pick, that's three first-round picks, they can move up and get their guy right there and be right back to having their franchise guy that they want, you know? I'm just saying they could easily do that. They have other picks, too, to package it up. They still might even be able to package those two first-rounders and throw a late-rounder in with it and move up into the top five. Maybe. I, I mean, maybe with a player or something, they might. They might be able to move up there and then make some noise because this is a rich draft with some talent. And I think you can pull something out of the hat here. So, the Baltimore Ravens might not be as stupid as everybody thinks because I don't think so. I think that they're going to really make some moves if they're able to... Uh, get rid of the, and purge the uh, Lamar Jackson experiment that's been going on far too long. Yeah, he's an NFL MVP voted on by some sports writers that like to create the hype. This guy's so great. He's not that great, man. He don't win big games, so I don't care about him. 
And I'm not saying that I hate Lamar because I don't hate him. I don't know him. So how could I hate him? I just think that his play doesn't equal championships and Super Bowl trophies. And that's all I care about. As any fan of any organization, that's all you too should care about is championships. Because in any argument, what are you going to say? My team got this. My team won this many. Okay. How many has your team won? You're one of them teams that ain't won shit. Okay, what argument do you have? Until you do it, until you've been to the big game, until you've been to the dance, until you've won the championships, you can't talk no shit. You just can't. You can talk a little bit, but not, you can't really talk too much shit. But anyway, guys, I want to wrap this video up. It's become long, and I don't do the super long content because I feel that you guys deserve to be entertain quickly and get shuffled back out and ready to watch another video and um i know we've been talking about the lamar jack jackson saga a lot lately um it's the off season and um there's not a shit ton of news there's a lot of news but this is the most important piece that's going to fall now we have Derek carr signed in in the saint to the saints um a good deal um what's 30 some million a year for a top shelf quarterback that now you can build around because you're not dedicating as much to the cap. So there's where you can uh, put in your, your rearranging money into bonuses and things like that to free up cap space because now you got a guy that's mid to lower market value and you're able to dump more change onto him, open up some more stuff, and you've already had a good base because you're not paying him 50 million. So you already had that money. You know, what's that? 18 and a half mil that you're not paying him what you would be paying a superstar guy. And when you have a serviceable guy named Derek Carr. And here too, I don't know why teams don't use the formula that the Baltimore Ravens used to use. Trent Dill for Joe Flacco. Players like that with good defense and they controlled the games and they won. Why not get a mid to, to mid serviceable type guy, mid to lower salary type guy that's very serviceable, that can play ball, that can put some points up there. Get that guy and bolster the defense, put some pieces around this mid-tier guy and let him play and see what happens. Maybe that's a better philosophy than going with Lamar and watching him run around like a chicken with his head cut off and yeah, he makes some exciting plays here and there, but you know damn well you ain't winning a Super Bowl. So again, guys, that's my breakdown of the AFC North as it currently sits right now in 2023 before the uh, frenzy of uh, pickups and drafts and all that stuff. So guys, thanks again for coming, man. I really appreciate y'all. I really, truly do. So I'm going to keep working harder to be better at content, to be better um, with editing and quality of videos. And I'm going to work on the studio even more. So keep sharing the page. Keep liking the videos. Liking the videos is important also. It really helps me out. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those of you that have, I really, truly appreciate you. And thanks for come, um, becoming part of the Mike Drop Sports community. Um, we hope to keep growing. I thank you all for coming um, to watch today. And um, look out for quarterbacks shorts on quarterbacks because I think things will be moving around here maybe in the next couple days once Lamar's tagged today and teams start playing that uh, carousel game. We'll have some more information. I'm sure some uh, great breaking news that'll be coming out and I'll try to get it to you as fast as I possibly can to be one of the first people out there to throw it out to uh, the fans of the teams. So I appreciate you all again. Like and subscribe and uh, Mike Drop Sports. We're out on this one. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you guys. And uh, until next time, sayonara.